This is in America. Pushed a court martial general for thanking God. He was speaking at a national day of prayer. Yes. We've always been allowed to participate. Presidents participated in national days of prayer. It says, despite the religious nature of the event, the Military Religious Freedom Foundation has called for Olson to be aggressively and very visibly brought to justice for his unforgivable crimes and transgressions. Adding that any other service members who helped him should be investigated and punished to the full extent of military law. So let's look at this statement made by the Military Religious Freedom Foundation. Wow, that does seem to be pretty harsh for a simple prayer. I wonder why these people reacted this way. The National Day of Prayer was signed into law in 1952, and it's for those of all faiths as a day of prayer and meditation. The writer goes on to defend their position, mentioning that they are Christian. As a Christian, it is wonderful to hear the testimonies of other Christians, but a person that is in the military must abide by the strict guidelines of religious neutrality while in uniform. If he had showed up in civilian clothes, there wouldn't have been a problem. This court has long recognized that the military is, by necessity, a specialized society separate from civilian society. Speech, to include religious speech, that is protected in the civil population may nonetheless undermine the effectiveness of response to command. Balance of free exercise of religion and establishment clause. Leaders at all levels must balance constitutional protections for their own free exercise of religion, including individual expressions of religious beliefs and the constitutional prohibition against governmental establishment of religion. They must ensure their words and actions cannot reasonably be construed to be officially endorsing or disapproving of or extending preferential treatment for any faith, belief, or absence of belief. If, have you seen his, sir, his message? It's a, it was like 30 minute long, 20, 30, something like that, I think it was. That's right, it was 23 minutes long. And it was, it was just a beautiful, you know, not overly religious. Had God used them to help raise their sons? Raise your hand if you're in that category. But God in the middle of it all. That I'm a redeemed believer in Christ. Fellow redeemed Christians, I'm just a Christian who happens to be in the Air Force. And we love Christ and we love this nation. God appoints us as a Christian. I learned about Christ to commit my life to Christ and learn to depend on God. God has been gracious enough. God enabled me to do that. God did that. God did all of that. And handing it over to God was a... God gave us four young men. God put me in positions in the church. Depend on Christ. Bowed before God. Bowed before God. On his knees before God. Dependent on God. And so God has given me this before God. Walk with God. God put certain messages in my life. The right way to approach my day for God. God's going to... For God. For God. God gave me... God gave me another uh, now... And God prostrate before God. God is fixing in this prayer. God reveals that in prayer. Christian adult relationship, fellow Christian adults. Help Christians succeed in life. Today, God just had a message. But just honoring God and, and, yes. and it was it was for the day of prayer. So why wouldn't it be on prayer? It is a national day of prayer. There are many, many other faiths, religions, deists, and atheists in the United States. The fact that he wore his Air Force uniform as a high-ranking general and that this was televised makes it not only inappropriate, it sends the wrong message. 
Our military is not a Christian army. We have outlawed God. We have not outlawed God. He is building a straw man and appealing to emotion. Our Supreme Court has outlawed God. The Supreme Court has not outlawed God. And there is no way that could be done. All religions are protected under the First and Fourteenth Amendments, and no one religion is sanctified or preferred by the Supreme Court. You can't put up the Ten Commandments. Used to be they were the basis of law, basis of the courts. Not anymore. This is really a side note on our legal system and the Ten Commandments. These numbers grow every day, and sometimes it is hard to distinguish one from another. But there are approximately 3,000 laws in the United States. The Ten Commandments covers four of them. That is less than 0.001%. Morality came first before the 33 books of the Bible were written, and our morality has evolved since then. If we really lived according to the Bible, we would be stoning people to death on a flat earth with the universe revolving around us. Without electricity and without medicine, we would be living in a hyper-paranoid world of unquestioned imaginary blackmail. What has happened to America? Jim, I said on the program 15 years ago, at least 15 years ago, I said, there is a day coming. I said, this is going to be the scariest scene you can ever imagine. There is a day coming when our military will be a pagan atheist army. And you, Mr. And Mrs. Christian, will be the enemy. Do you think when the military has chased all the Christians out, all the God-fearing men, when they've chased them out, locked them up, whatever, do you think then when you have a, a antichrist man in the White House, whether it's this one or a future one, and he tells a atheistic, God-hating military, these Christians are enemies of the state. Do you think it would be hard for them to round us up? They, they'll be doing their patriotic duty. They've already listed the Christians. Yes. That's right. With the enemies. That's right. This is how fast it's changing. So what happened to this General Olson? Well, the Air Force dropped the charges and made a public statement, basically doing a campaign to clean up his mess, claiming he spoke on his own behalf and the matter was dismissed. There was no military outlaw of God. No Christians were rounded up. The Supreme Court did not outlaw Christianity. If anything, General Olson was given special treatment because he made a public statement proclaiming Christ as his personal savior. Throughout this program, they are selling storable eggs for a coming apocalypse. They paint a horrible picture of Christians going to concentration camps and being rounded up like criminals. All the while, they terrify their audience. They briefly put this ad up for this bucket of dried eggs that's supposed to last for 40 days. It is the most disgusting and uncomfortable marketing tactic I have ever had the misfortune of witnessing. Propaganda is a powerful, powerful tool of thought and emotional manipulation to exploit the masses who often will not question their peers' opinions. I encourage, nay, I implore you to question the popular voice. Look into the facts yourself and ask what do they have to gain from this. Thank you and blessed be.